Welcome back friends, Corey from Wondering Weekends here. I got an interesting product review for you today. What if a Yeti cooler and a freezer had a baby? That's kind of what we got here. The folks at over at Iceco, they reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to review this product for us? I said, sure, I think there's some people out in the RV world, in the, the tent, camping RV world, that could use some extra cold storage that's portable. And also, this is actually a freezer as well. So we're gonna check it out, we're gonna put it through. There's definitely some pros and cons. Uh, we're gonna go through all of those, stay tuned. So how are we going to review this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it inside. It's about 70 degrees inside, and it does come with an adapter to plug it up inside to a wall outlet uh, and see how long it takes to get cold. So that's going to be important. How long do we? How much heads up do we need to try to get this thing down to temperature? I don't really have to worry about how long it keeps stuff cold, just because it keeps cold forever, right? I mean, unless you have unless you have, don't have a power source for a significant amount of time. And then you're probably gonna be better off just getting a regular cooler anyway, right? So this is gonna be uh, something for, like I said, car camping, pop-ups, extra storage for uh, RVers, things like that, overlanders, folks that like to ride trails. You know, if you're, if you're riding all day, you, this thing will be cooling well, since it's plugged up to the, uh, the car. And also a, a nice feature that it does have, I'm gonna mention that now while I'm thinking about it, is it does have battery protection. So it's got a, uh, I guess they call it a, a smart chip in there that lets it know, okay, it's overtaxing the car battery. It's going to lay off the cooling. The compressor is going to slow down a little bit. All of that's in the instructions. I thought that was an important feature. But let's go inside and see how long it takes this thing to get cooled down. Okay, friends, I've got my outdoor weather station here, outdoor indoor weather station here. I've got my temperature sensor inside, the outdoor temperature sensor. I've got it inside the cooler. Right now it's reading 71 degrees. Uh, indoor says 66. That's a little chilly. I don't think it's, I don't know if it's that cool in here, but anyway, doesn't matter. All right, let's plug it up. And you can see it powering on down here. All right, let's turn it on. I've got it on max. And I'm gonna start my timer here. Hit start. And let's see how long it takes to cool down. Think everything running good. The uh, the compressor is not loud at all. It's very quiet for a compressor. All right, let's see how long it takes. Okay, a little bit of a concern here. So this is reading 32 degrees. So at this point, I would be uh, I would be stopping the timer based on this thermometer, but my thermometer is reading 46 degrees. So that's concerning because at this point, I, if it was using this as a refrigerator, I would uh, I would have turned this. The compressor would not be running right now. It would just turn on and off and try to maintain 32 degrees. So that's odd. I don't know. I've got it set to zero. We'll see how long it takes to get it below 40, which would be refrigerator status, and then how long it takes to get to zero, if it'll even get there. So yeah, this is uh, quite interesting. All right, we're about 40 minutes in now, and less discrepancy between the thermometer on the ice co and the thermometer up here. Uh, that's inside the, the uh, unit that's inside. 
So, again, 40 minutes, we're in freezer territory. That's pretty good. I'm, I, you know, within an hour, you're in freezer territory, easy. So, I'd be, I'm happy with that. And again, we're, we're keeping an eye on this. 23 degrees here, we got seven degrees discrepancy now between the two units as far as temp's concerned. Let's see if it closes the gap even more. Okay, we're exactly an hour in. We're reading 14 degrees on the ice cove and 15 degrees on the uh, lacrosse. So I think I'm good with that. I'm completely good with that. So I guess the closer we get to the set point, the set point zero, the closer we get, maybe the uh, thermometers leveled out. So not a big deal. Well, I was concerned at first, but I think we're okay. Let's keep going to see how long it takes to get to, to get to zero. All right, guys, I came in here when it was at one degrees and it was an hour, 41 minutes. I got distracted after that and I, uh, I went into the other room for a little while. Now we're at negative five, but the lowest it got was negative seven. And now actually the, uh, the thermometers are matching up a little bit better. It's actually in the favor of the ice co now. Now it says it's at three degrees and this says negative six. When it got down to negative seven, the uh, compressor kicked off. It was good to go, obviously it didn't keep running. And it let it get it back up to about negative one. And then it kicked back on and dropped it again. Now it's headed back to negative seven. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, hour and 41 minutes to get to zero degrees from 71 degrees. Okay, friends, let's talk about the pros and cons of the ice co. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the cons out of the way. Uh, two pretty big cons, it's heavy. This thing is heavy. Obviously, there's a compressor in here. It's roto-molded. It's heavy-duty. It's built like a tank. Uh, it's 45 pounds. So that's going to be a deal-breaker for some folks, although it's nice. Uh, if you can't lift it, then you can't use it, right? The second con, obviously, is the price. $559. I'm filming this right after Christmas in 2020. So right now, the Amazon price is, is $559. Uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for, for us, anyway. And... Um, so yeah, that's something to think about. Now, pros, would I be disappointed in this had I paid $559 for it? And I don't think so. Now, if this is something that you really needed, that's something that's gonna really come in handy, you really need the cold storage, but you don't need a full-on uh, freezer or don't have room for a freezer or another fridge, this is a very viable option. Now, I would not be disappointed in the construction. It's got a lot of pros to it. Um, nice roto-molded. Again, it's like if a Yeti were to have a baby with a freezer. And it does get down to zero degrees. You can set it to do 34 degrees if you just wanted a fridge. And it does hold ice. If you go to Amazon reviews, man, they got glowing reviews on Amazon. People love these things. Uh, they do, it does fine at a tilt. So if you're off-roading, you can go 40 degrees either way. And it still does, does just fine. A lot of compressors, um, you have to be kind of level for them to work properly. Not so with this one. It does have a five-year warranty on the compressor. It's a German-made compressor, and they, they, they warranty that for five years, and then one year on everything else. Nice seals. Uh, the handles could be a little better. I would like to see like a, a rope-style handle similar to a Yeti, but you do have tie-downs here. So that's a, that's a nice feature, and I could just tie it right down there to the Jeep if I needed to. Overall, I think this is a great option for those of you, you know who you are, that need some more freezer storage, more fridge storage, uh, I think this is a great, great option. Even at the high price tag, I think you'd be happy with what you're getting. Okay, friends, there you have it. So I'm going to link the ice co in the description box below. We are not using our Amazon link. We make no money from this. I'm just giving you an easy way to get there. We're using their link. Uh, so go buy one or don't. Doesn't matter to us. But if you need some extra cold storage, at least check it out. It's definitely a viable option. I hope this was useful. See ya.